In the book of Joshua this morning, chapter 24, and the guest that we have here with us this morning, we're glad that you're here. Thank you for visiting us. And Brian, right? Yes. And Shanna, mm -hmm. so happy to have them. And I guess Craig just don't mind recruiting. <laughs> it's just pulling the right on in. <laughs> Yeah, there is a need, though, in the Lord. The Lord can, obviously it needs to be resonated in the individual's own spirit, but um, we're going to talk today about, it's good to have Karen. She's been out a little while due to the, due to the damage of the fall. Yes. <laughs> That's where pain came from, didn't it? Didn't see it. I see it. I better hush. Joshua 24, it's a very familiar passage of scripture that we probably have read many times, but today. I want to bring out three points. This man made a declaration here. He made it. He made a, a statement with this. He says, "Now therefore, verse fourteen, Joshua twenty-four, fear the Lord, serve Him." New King James Version. In sincerity and in truth, put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's so inspiring just to read it, but to understand that this man, Joshua, we're going to talk about kingdom men, kingdom men. In this declaration, Joshua made it in three categories, and he made it to serve the Lord regardless of of what was happening in the culture around him. That's the pressure. That's the cultural temptations. But what does God say about fathers? In Exodus chapter 20, verse 12, when he instituted the connection and the relationship with that, he said, honor your father and your mother. Honor your father. Now, as our Heavenly Father, He disciplines us. So people, people that say He's our Father, you know, He disciplines us, but He receives us. And He forgives us. And He rejoices over us when we in repentance return to Him, even if we have left. That's the Father. Yeah, he's, he's going to discipline us, but he's also going to receive us. He, he disciplines us in love, right? If you've got a, a father, you've got a husband in your life today, you need to look at him before this day is over. I, I ask you to do this. Look at him and say, do you realize I am following you? Put some pressure on him. Say, I'm following you. Where are we going? Where are we going? Children, young people, teenagers, let him know. Noah was recognized for his faithfulness, bravery, and devotion. All trademarks of fathers. Abraham for his faith and his obedience to God. And the role 
of a father to many nations. David for repentance and self-examination and his close walk with God. A kingdom man is a male who has made the decision to operate consistently under the governments of God and the lordship of Jesus Christ. Let me say that again. A kingdom man is a male who has made the decision to operate consistently under the governments of God and the lordship of Jesus Christ. So in this passage of scripture, here's a man that was looking at a bunch of men that he decided that he needed to, he had to make a declaration. He said, whom will you serve? And you're going to serve the gods of the culture and you're going to be pressured basically serving yourself. And in our current culture, being a kingdom man can almost, it can look counter-cultural. It can almost look like we're against our culture. But when Joshua took a stand and wanted to stand against people that were making wrong decisions, he wasn't standing against people or disagreeing with people just for the sake of disagreeing with them. Right? He was doing it because it was the things that God needed and wanted for him to do. So we have choices. As fathers, there's constantly choices before us, choices to be made. Just as those people, they had to make choices. There's consequences to the choices we all make, not just fathers. But as fathers, we certainly need to be students of the consequences of our choices. Yes. We need to make well-informed decisions and choices. Did you ever hear about the little story about the little boy that they, all they had was an outhouse, his, his parents, their house, they, all they had was an outhouse, and he despised that house. And he wanted his father to do something about it. And the, the, the outhouse was right beside a creek. And one day he decided to make a choice and push the outhouse into the creek. He watched it as it bubbly and floated off. And then later that evening his dad called him in there and he said, Son, did you push the outhouse into the creek? He said, Yes, Dad, I, I did. He said, well, now I'm going to have to discipline you. He said, but, Dad, I didn't lie. And, you know, George Washington, when he lied, he didn't lie about cutting down the cherry tree. His daddy let him buy it. Let him get by with it. He said, son, George Washington was not in the White House, in the cherry tree when he chopped it down. <laughs> Is it still even funny or are you laughing at me? <laughs> in Joshua's time and in our time, what we need is some kingdom men. Men with a backbone. Men who love themselves properly and who love their families and love this world that we live in but are very very clear to say this is where I'm going I've made a decision I'm walking in this direction me and my house we're going to serve the Lord did you know when there's such a thing as the father's blessing and when the son leaves the house if the son leaves the house in disagreement with the father there is a, a chance and an opportunity for defeat to come into his life. There's a lot of reasons why that may happen, so let's just be fair about it. Um, 
If the father don't kick him out, the father don't pressure him to leave, if this son just leaves and his father really don't feel like he needs to leave, and all of that has balance to it, but it can, what I'm trying to tell you is the father's blessing, Genesis 49, verse 26. Someone get it for me. Genesis 49, verse 26. And I, I did have it from the Amplified Version, but you could read it from whatever uh, version of the Bible you have there. The blessing of the Father. Genesis 49, verse 26. Someone have it? The blessings of your Father have excelled the blessings of my ancestors up to the utmost bound of the everlasting hills. They shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the head of him who was separate from his brothers. So, here's Jacob blessing his brothers. And he's saying, there's going to be a blessing on you that's coming from me. The blessing when it is transferred from the father to the son has the ability to increase. The blessing exceeds. The blessing from the Father has a power with it that will exceed. Jacob was saying it exceeds Abraham and it exceeds Isaac. That was his, that was his, his father's. So he said, the blessing that I'm placing on you, Joseph, is a very powerful blessing. So when the Father blesses you, look, it don't matter who curses you. When the Father's got his hand on you saying, yeah, I know you're not perfect, but you're my son. And you know what? I'm going to help you get through it. We're going to survive this here, man. I'm here for you. There seems to be such a cultural gap between, you, you, don't, you don't mind me if I use you for a second, just talk about you, do you, son? He's about 15 years old, and he is, I don't know how old he is. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. Let's see, between people of this age, especially this age, I'm 53, he's 15, I have a son 15. There seems to be a cultural gap. And it seems like these guys are too silent. And they won't talk to you and they won't speak to you. And sometimes we're so verbal <laughs> because they're silent that we feel like we're overwhelming each other. But Malachi said, God says, I'm going to have to send a bond back between the sons and the daughters. I, I, I'm going to have to come and straighten this thing out because the fathers have got so distant from the sons that I've got to return the hearts to the fathers and the children to their fathers unless I have to curse the earth. So the blessing of the father. Listen, it don't matter what. It, there's a message right here. I can stop right here, but... If God has blessed you and your father, your father's trying to live for God and he's a Christian, listen, you don't need the world to affirm you. Come on. Right. Yes, amen. If you've got God and your father and your dad, or if you've got a good pastor, or if you got, if you even just have the father, the, the heavenly father, his power and authority is eternal. And his, that's what Jacob was really trying to tell him. I'm putting the blessing of God off of me, transferring it on to you. And I want you to know what God's going to do in your life is going to be different than what he did in Isaac. And it's going to be different than what he did in Abraham. It's going to be the blessing that's right for your life. And it's going to fill your life with the blessings of the Lord. Nobody likes to see it when a father and son are crossed up. I don't like it. But... Also, if the father has got off base, Malachi 4, 5, 6, he said, I got to turn the heart of the father back to the children. And I got to turn the heart of the children back to the father. What does that mean? That means if I'm not making a good connection with my son because of selfishness, I need to be willing to change. I need as a father to be, fathers need to be willing to change. Fathers need to be willing to admit, okay, I've been doing this for a long time, but I've been wrong on this. And now I'm doing the best I can to change it. I like to preach my own funeral. 
not in the real world, obviously. But the one that says, Romans 12, 1, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, Lord. Put myself on the altar. Paul said, I die daily. I wish I was perfect at this. I wish I was great at this, but I'm getting better. I'm getting better, and I'm going to do what God wants me to do. There's never been a time that's more important or more needful than right now. Hey, the well-being of everything is at stake right now. The well-being of everything. You can read Isaiah chapter 3 sometime and you will find that fathers are so critical. Their voice is coming at us right now at this time in our lives. We are at a fork in the road. We're at a time in our life and our nation. We face chaos. We face confusion. We face lack of clarity, voices coming from everywhere. But when men don't make the right choices, Isaiah 3 says, the children go into rebellion. The women take on roles that God didn't intend for them to have to take on. And the men become weak. No offense to any man here. I've seen it. The Bible says that on that passage, they would fall on the sword. We got too many men giving up. We got too many men said, I can't do anything with them. We don't need hard men. We need merciful men. Give me Luke 6, 36. We need to take a hard stand, but we need to do it with mercy. I'm taking a stand because it's right. I'm not budging from this right here. But I love you. See, the Father's merciful when he deals with us. Amen. And I want him to be merciful with me. Amen. But when my son and my daughter breaks the rules that I haven't set, I try to explain to them it's mostly for your own safety. See, the little boy that pushed the, the outhouse into the creek didn't think the situation through. He didn't know what the consequences of his choice could be. And we, we're selfish when we make decisions. I hope y'all are releasing me to preach to you like this this morning. I know I'm being right now. I'm getting right now in your business, and I don't mean to be in any way vindictive against anyone today. I'm not. But I'm telling you right now, we need to stand up as men of God in this house. Amen. Yes, amen. amen. If the men will stand up and be men of God and stand for what's right, stand with love and mercy, but stand for what's right, I literally believe, literally believe that it would literally change our nation. I believe that. I know the women helping their system, they have their role too. Praise God. There's a father dimension of ministry and there's a mother dimension of ministry. The father has his role in the ministry, ministry and the mother has her mother's not excluded. But today's Father Day. And we're talking to men. <laughs> Paul said, conduct yourself like a man and be strong. Gird up and fight. <clears throat> Sometimes the devil's coming for your kids and you can't sleep talk him out of the house. It's like we told you, I told you one time before, you can be courteous to people, but you can never be courteous to a spirit of hell. Amen. And too many men are operating way, way outside of their divinely ordained responsibility. Sisters, my sisters, my sisters, please hear me this morning. Don't you go out and if you're single or looking for a husband or in your life someday will be looking for a companion. Don't go looking for any other man except a kingdom man. Amen. A kingdom, I don't mind saying it. You can reward, reward them back to me if you want to. Tell them, Pastor, if you want to, I don't mind. I'll sign my name beside it, autograph that statement. Don't choose any other man but a kingdom man. Amen. Oh, y'all did this morning. I thought I'd get a hand clap or something to do something. Clap your hands, do something. <laughs> kingdom men, because there's so much in the kingdom of God. So we make decisions and we 
We get in line to do the things of God with our decisions. And, and we cannot determine what the consequences of our choices are going to be. See, see, God puts us in the kingdom. And the kingdom has these boundaries. Like a football field. A football field has the end zone. It has the sidelines. It has the, the yard lines. And there are, there are rules about football that are non-negotiable. But you, sir, can call the plays. And the consequences of the play that you call is going to be determined by the choice you made. So God don't force us to make the choices. He gives us the right to make our choices. But then, what's the consequences going to be of our choices? So, we live within the kingdom. Joshua said, as far as me and my household. You know what he was, what he was doing? He was seeing that they had come out of Egypt, but there was still some Egypt in them. And he was concerned that they were going to try to help hang on to the remnants of Egypt and to serve the God and have the blessings of God. They wanted the benefits of the promises of God without the selection to the submission and the service to God. And that's what happens when we come out of the world and we don't really come out of it. We have just enough. And, and the, the Israelites at that time needed to make a decision, all right? What are you going to do? What we need to do today is, and Tony Evans said this, we don't need, let's see how he said it, don't let the place you're living define the decisions you make. you got to make kingdom decisions. Yes. We need to make godly decisions. Yes. Just because we live in a liberal world don't mean we just go with the flow. You know who, come on men, you know, you know who just yeah. goes with the flow? Jellyfish. <laughs> get, a, get a spine. Be a man. Stand against the current if you need to. Say, I'm not letting my house hold. We're not going down that road. Why? I know there comes a time and a place in young men's and young women's lives when you can't be like that anymore. You have, to, you have to let them make their decision. But the Israelites was living among the Amorites at that time, and they were feeling pressure to conform to the culture of that time, and we're in that same place right now. We need to stop if we are compromising with the culture that is around us. God cannot be second. Amen. God cannot be second. So he told them about the idols. They were serving idols. What is an idol? What does that mean to us? An idol is anything or anyone, including yourself, that can overrule God. If your opinion, decision, or someone else's, or anything else, so the three marks, the three marks of Joshua's decision. One, it was a personal decision. He said, for me, I'm going to serve the Lord. That man, that leader, needed to make that decision. He needed to take a stand he, for him, for himself. He did it. He took the stand. Why not? Everyone else is declaring what they believe in. Why should the men of God be ambiguous about what we believe in? Yes. Huh? They're out there screaming and yelling and saying what they are going to follow. Why don't we just stand up with love and say, well, you can choose who you want to serve, but as far as me and my house, we will. We will. That means even if them kids are out and away, if you've prayed for them and you brought them, that's, that means they're in the kingdom and God's going to bring them. They will come back. 
They will come back. That man will come back. Come on, somebody. I hit, I hit a vein in the spirit right there. I said they will come back. Satan's a liar. He's a destroyer. I know that. He's a wrecker of homes and marriages. I, but I rebuke him by the authority that is in the name of Jesus Christ right now. And tell him, you must clean. You cannot have the men and you cannot have the families. You are defeated and your power is under my feet. Amen. Second, he made a family declaration. I'm going to close. You can go ahead and stay in the position you're in right now. You know, he didn't ask for a vote. Come on. Hello. Hello. He yes. said, it's for me and my house. Yes. Right. Yeah. Adam, he didn't ask for a vote. He stood up as the man of the home, the dad. He said, we're going to serve the Lord in this house. Yes. Yes. The day you decide to leave and walk out the door, I'm going to do my best to put my blessing yes. on you. And you then have your own responsibility. But when you're in my house, oh, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to certain probably fall. But you see, G God, uh, Joshua made a covering statement. Yeah. He said, the Father, the God of heaven, is covering me. Yeah. And I'm covering my family. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't walk in that authority unless he is following and covering me. Yeah. Let him cover you. Because if he's not covering you, Dad, Sir, man, you can't properly Cover your family. That's right. Every kingdom man makes word-based, personal, and family decisions. And the third is a cultural decision. He made it publicly. He made that statement publicly. And he said, here, here we are. We're going to serve the Lord. That's what we're going to do. You can watch us or you can join us. As I close, we're facing all kind of pandemics right now. We've got a health pandemic, a racial pandemic, a police and community pandemic. We've got clashes going on everywhere. But you know what the answer is? The kingdom. Yeah. Be in the kingdom. Be a kingdom man. Because in all of these areas, the kingdom has answers. Yeah. So the best solution for any of these pandemics is godly men and women taking their place and speaking about what God says about racial injustice, what God says about order, what God says about healing wounds, what God says how we are to relate to one another, what God says about the role of the government, what God says about how institutions are to conduct themselves. There's a warning in this Father's Day sermon because there's a culture out there that does not want men of God to succeed. I hate to say that, but it is true. While our goal is to move forward, you might as well expect resistance. You're going to meet resistance. And God, maybe... Maybe someone's going to listen that has literally walked away from their family. Well, God provides an opportunity to get it back in alignment with him. And whenever possible, back in alignment with their families. I want to make these two comments about my dad. And then I'm going to end. No man I ever met was my father's equal. And I've never loved another man as much as my dad. My father gave me the greatest gift that any person could ever give to another person. He believed in me. He believed in me. Adam, where you at? I believe in you, son. I believe in you. We've got a culture that wants to trick us and trip us up 
But the answer is what choice are we going to make? The answer is in our choice. Do you choose to follow him? If you choose to follow him, your family should know about it. The world ought to know about it. The culture ought to know about it. Your friends ought to know about it. Come on, men. Yes. You don't come in the house of God being Christian and go back out there in the world and start acting secular. Yeah. Stay with the things of God. If you're not a big talker, that's okay. Let your, just let your life shine. Let your light so shine. Amen. You know, he said to let the light shine. That means take the fleshly coverings off. Don't let them see you so much. They want to see Jesus. So I want us to stand this morning and I want us to Thank you.